Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Practical English Brain. Passive form in future perfect tense. Let's start it. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, keep in mind that when we use future perfect tense, we talk about a completed action before something else in the future. Although I don't explain, I mean, the tense itself, but I'm just giving you this idea. Whenever future perfect tense is used, the main usage of this tense is to talk about a completed action uh, before something else in the future. So how do we change sentences from active form to passive form in future perfect tense? Let's have a look at these examples, uh, affirmative and negative sentences first. So the first one is affirmative or positive sentence. She will have cooked dinner before the guests arrive. So the concept is that the action of cooking dinner will be completed before something else, before the guests arrive in the future. So that's the concept. But our main lesson is how to change sentences from active to passive form in future perfect tense. Look, uh, if it's active form, <coughs> you use your subject at the beginning of a sentence. She is the subject here. Will have, then you need two auxiliaries. You may use be going to have, that's also possible. Instead of she will have, you can say she's going to have. Or the short form she's gonna have that's also possible and there's no no problem i mean there isn't any difference i mean interchangeably you can use will or you can use becoming too no problem uh so these two auxiliaries will to show it's a future tense and the auxiliary have to show it's a perfect tense so future perfect and then main verb in third form and then uh, you know the object uh, and then the rest of the sentence. She will have cooked dinner before the guests arrive. When you change it to uh, passive form, I mean, obviously the object of your active sentence becomes the subject of a passive sentence. So after subject, you bring the same auxiliaries will have. Will have here after subject she and will have here after the subject dinner. But then the third form of to be is added. Uh, and after the third form of to be, Ben, you bring the main verb in third form. So now this Ben, this to be verb gives us an idea that uh, the subject uh, did not do this action, but the subject received this action or something happened to the subject. So I hope this idea is clear. So dinner will have been cooked by her uh, before the guests arrive. Uh, and if you want to make it negative, you only add not. I mean, use the same structures, the same, you know, rules, but you add the word not right after the first auxiliary well okay so uh he will not have performed the prayer before afternoon so you may say he's not going to have performed the prayer before afternoon if you want to use be going to that's also okay so obviously uh here the subject of your this active sentence is he uh i mean the subject is the door of this action performing and the prayer is the object and is the receiver of this action. So now the prayer, which was the object of your active sentence, became the subject of your passive sentence. So the prayer. And then you bring, I mean, will not have. I mean, the same auxiliaries will not have here, will not have here. But you add been in passive form before the main verb third form. So the prayer will not have been performed by him passive form. Uh, interrogatives or yes, no questions. You bring will, the first auxiliary. Uh, at the beginning of your uh, yes no question then subject and then have so in other words if you pay attention here in interrogative sentences the subject of your sentence comes between these two auxiliaries will she have i mean uh, well the first auxiliary comes at the beginning then subject then the second auxiliary, then the main verb in third form so will she have written a letter before midnight and if you pay attention here, it's pretty easy. Again, it's pretty easy. I know it's a part of the advanced grammar and like changing future perfect tense sentence to passive form. It's obviously advanced grammar, but it's pretty easy. Okay, you follow the same rules. Look, I mean, a letter is your subject of the passive sentence here and it comes between well and have. But then another auxiliary in passive form is added and that is the third form of to be verb been and then main verb in third form so will a letter have been written by her before midnight okay there's one more example will they have accomplished the mission okay so accomplished is your main verb in third form and they is your subject so mission was the object and it became the subject of your passive will the mission have been accomplished by them 
This is how you change interrogative sentences in future perfect tense from active to passive form. Okay. Um, negative interrogatives, again, complete form and short form. Okay. So the reason I brought like negative interrogative sentences and R12 tenses is because I wanna I, I want you to learn, I mean, uh, this grammatical point completely. It's not like you can only change affirmative sentences, that's all. Okay, you can change affirmative sentences, negative sentences, interrogative, negative interrogative and information questions. So uh, I hope each and everything is covered in these uh, videos, in these lessons. So if you want to use the complete form, so right after the first auxiliary will you bring uh, your subject and then not have, not have, and then main verb in third form. Uh, will we not have drunk tea before leaving the house? Will we not have drunk tea before leaving the house? And you want to change it to uh, passive form? Will tea, see subject, we here, and tea, object. Now, object of the active sentence became the subject of a passive sentence. And, uh, I mean, drunk is the main verb, and, you know, a by phrase may or may not be used sometimes. So here I haven't used it because it's not always necessary to use the by phrase. So, will tea not have been drunk before leaving the house? Okay. And look at this example. It's, I mean, if you use the short form, the short form is more common spoken English. Won't we have drunk tea before leaving the house? Or won't tea have been drunk by us, if you want to add the by phrase, by us before leaving the house? So, look, I mean, subject uh, becomes object of preposition. I haven't used the by phrase here, so... Uh, therefore is not here but sometimes if the subject if the door of the action is not kind of noon person or if it's not necessary the focus is more on the receiver of action here like I mean which is uh, tea and it receives the action of drinking okay the focus is more on drinking tea not by whom you know tea was drunk in that case you may not even use the by phrase information questions or WH questions pretty easy at the beginning, W is question word in active form, then will, then subject, then have, I mean the auxiliary have, then a main verb in third form, and then object and the rest of the same. But keep in mind that because of will, even if the subject is like third person singular in both active and passive forms, the auxiliary have is used in future perfect tense, not has. I mean, in present perfect tense, you use has with third person singular, he, she, it, and with the rest of them, you use have. But in future perfect tense, you use have with all subjects. I mean, I, uh, you, we, they, he, she, it, singular noun, plural noun, whatever. Okay, use have. And, and, and it's why? Because after well, model example, like well, we use base form, base form is have, not has. So even though the subject is John, I mean third person singular here, but we do not say where will John has sent, okay? You should be have. I hope this point is clear. Where will John have sent Mike before 2005? And now John was the subject or doer of this action sending. Mike was the object or receiver of this action sending. And now object of the active sentence became subject of the passive sentence. And John, the subject of the active sentence, became object of preposition. So, where will Mike have been sent by John before 2005? Now, look at this example. What will he have done before evening? It's kind of tricky again, okay? Because keep in mind that most of the times when the IWH question word, what is used, it itself functions as the subject of your sentence. Okay, so therefore, okay, what will he have done before evening? I mean, uh, so so if the subject is mentioned, okay, uh, I mean, your sentence, so what, the word what itself functions as object, okay? But if subject is not used, okay, in that case, you know, it functions uh, uh, as, as a subject, okay? So in this sentence, we don't have object. We have subject he he have done before evening okay but we do not have objects so the word what itself functions as an object here why because our question is about the uh, about the receiver of the action okay what will he have done before evening okay uh what will he have done before evening so we ask our question about the receiver of the action okay for example anything that he has done for example if we say uh, he will have uh, 
watched a movie. So our question is about uh, a movie, which is the receiver of the action. I hope this idea is clear because it's something like confusing, but I hope now it's clear. Okay, so now again, you bring the same WH question word here at the beginning, then we'll have been all of the three auxiliaries. You do not bring anything between them. Why? Because the word what uh, here it functions, you know, it comes at the beginning of the sentence, okay, but it functions as object because our question is about object, about the receiver of the action. And again, obviously, in passive form, uh, you know, it comes at the beginning because it is a subject of your passive sentence. Well, have been done. Look, by him, he, I mean, the subject became the object of preposition. So what will have been done by him before evening? Don't forget, it's something tricky. I mean, if someone is bragging a lot of a grammar, that they know a lot of grammar, okay? So you can tell them, uh, change this sentence and explain it to me, okay? So that's why I brought this example for you, okay? Uh, so I hope you understood or you learned how to change active sentences to passive form in future perfect tense. And now look at this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Practical English Brand. Have a great time for now. In